right of women to vote had initially been an issue in Philadelphia at the drawing up of the original Constitution of the United States. At that time, the responsibility was shunted off to the 13 states to decide and was promptly forgotten. But ladies like Mrs. Carrie Chapman Catt refused to let the issue lie. From 1900 on, women's suffrage became an increasingly important crusade that gathered momentum as the years passed. Other countries of the world, beginning with New Zealand in 1891, had granted their women the constitutional right to vote. The American feminine contingent now fought tooth and nail for the same privilege. Their sisters in England joined them with a suffragette movement. Mrs. Emmeline Pankhurst carried the fight to the masses as head of the English movement. On more than one occasion, she was arrested for overzealous demonstrations on behalf of the universal women's suffrage. And surprisingly enough, men, some very important men like Teddy Roosevelt, came out strongly for the movement in America. Teddy was the pride and joy of the ladies in this battle. Beginning with Wyoming in 1890, 10 states had granted voting rights to their weaker sex citizens by 1917. In 1916, the first lady congressman, Jeanette Rankin from Montana, took her seat in Washington's House of Representatives. The tide of battle was turning in favor of the National American Women's Association. At the presidential nominating convention of 1916, the suffragettes haunted the streets of Chicago, letting the delegates know in no uncertain terms their feelings on the inclusion of a pro-suffragette plank in the political platform. They stole the thunder from the usual colorful doings of the male delegates. Then, in 1919, came the climactic moment in the suffragette campaign. Congress approved the 19th Amendment, which provided for the voting rights of women. Speaker Gillette of the House signed the bill accompanied by many feminine handshakes. Vice President Marshall performed the same function for the Senate. Later, ratification of the amendment by 36 states made it a law of the land. The official date of this enactment came on August 26, 1920. And in the following November, the ladies appeared at the polls on election day by the hundreds of thousands. They had won their right to vote. The amendment of womanhood in the United States was now complete. cries from every corner of the land womankind arise political equality and equal rights with men <laughs> take heart for mrs pankhurst has been clapped in irons again no more the meek and mild subservience we we're fighting for our rights militantly never you fear if I may have a word, Mrs. Banks, so cast off the shackles of yesterday and shoulder to shoulder into the fray. Our daughters' daughters will adore us and they'll sing in grateful chorus. Well done, Banks.